Hey everybody, welcome back to Tuesday Bingo, where we are working hard to help you connect with your destination better. For today's video, we've surveyed locals, natives, and visitors alike to figure out the top 10 foods of Oaxaca, Mexico. Starting off our list, the number 10 spot goes to the tamale. This traditional Mesoamerican dish is made by steaming the corned base masa inside of a corn husk, which acts as both seasoning and cooking hardware. The cooked masa tastes like what it is, a dense crumbly corn dough, but the tamale really boasts the flavor of whatever it's stuffed with. It could be different meats, cheeses, vegetables, or even fruits and all different kinds of salsa. That's where the flavor's coming from. These literal pocket foods are a piece of Mesoamerican history and are believed to have been made back in 8000 BC. And this timeline makes sense because corn, the crop that changed the world, is believed to have been first domesticated in Mexico right around the same time. The number nine spot goes to cervezas. Beer is one of the oldest alcoholic beverages in the world and is incredibly popular in Oaxaca. This naturally carbonated drink is the product of fermenting different cereal grains and hops. And although flavors of beer are all over the place, most would agree that beer generally leans a little bitter and is extremely satisfying. Now, carbonated alcohols in Mexico go way back, but the European style beer that we think of when we think brewski was introduced when the Spanish arrived. A European country introducing European style beer it makes sense, right? One local craft brewery that came up often is called Consejo Cervecer. However, if craft beers aren't your thing, Modelo and Pacifico will definitely get the job done. Number eight, the chocolate that we all know and love comes from a fruit called cacao. This large alien looking pod is cut open to reveal the fruit's nut-like cacao beans that have this slimy coating. When tasted raw, this slimy pulp has a flavor combination similar to melon and tangerine, but completely transforms once it's roasted. After being cooked, these seeds are ground into a paste that's gonna taste like the darkest 100% chocolate bar that you've ever had, because that's what this is. Now the cacao tree dates back over 4,000 years in Mexico and has been highly regarded by the country ever since. Chocolate was consumed by the Almecs, the Aztecs, and the Mayans, and in its liquid form was referred to as the drink of the gods. Chocolate and cacao, as you will see, will appear on many different dishes that are on this list. The number seven spot goes to atole. Atole is a hot beverage made from a corn base. Typical ingredients include masa, sugar, vanilla, and cinnamon, but it can be further flavored with chocolate and different kinds of fruit. Its consistency can range anywhere from thin and liquidy to thicker and more porridge-like. Atole is a very traditional Mexican drink that's closely associated with Dia de Muertos, or Day of the Dead, but can be enjoyed any time of year, really, most commonly with breakfast or dinner. It should be pretty easy to find this in Oaxaca as it's sold by many street vendors. Number six goes to Flor de Calabaza, or pumpkin flowers. These squash blossoms are just what they sound like the flowers from pumpkin plants. They can be stuffed and fried, used in quesadillas, made with tamales, or mixed into soups. They can be cooked a bunch of different ways. Their texture is soft, velvety, and extremely tender, with a delicate flavor that still tastes a little bit like pumpkin. Now, pumpkin plants were the first recorded plant that was cultivated in Mesoamerica. So one could presume that they've been eating these pumpkin flowers in Oaxaca for a long time. Say about 10,000 years, give or take. The number five spot goes to Chapulines, toasted grasshopper. My resources have told me that they taste like a wetter version of a salt and vinegar potato chip. They're typically seasoned with salt, garlic, and lime, but can also be found seasoned with local maguey worms, 
giving them a little extra blast of salt, sour, and spiciness. It shouldn't be too hard scouting these out as they're commonly sold by street vendors throughout the state by the scoopful. And there's a lot of grasshoppers in Oaxaca, especially after adult specimens lay their eggs in May. Now, Let's talk sustainability for a second. Biomass alone, insects are the largest source of available protein worldwide. Between their high nutritional values, easy to meet dietary requirements, and efficiency of reproduction, insects might just be our dietary future. Number four goes to Tahate. This non-alcoholic beverage is served cold and celebrates local cacao and maize. Typical ingredients include maize, cacao, cacao flowers, and the seeds from local mamey fruits. This fruit grows on trees that are native to Mexico. All of these ingredients might be toasted just to give some extra flavor, but they're always ground down into a paste before being mixed with water. The drink can also be sweetened. This pre-Hispanic Mexican drink is said to taste like a combination of cold hot cocoa mixed with lilac flowers with a texture that's similar to a version of a slightly warmer Wendy's Frosty. The number three spot goes to Mezcal. Similar to tequila, this distilled libation is made from agave. And since these two spirits are made from the same plant, naturally they share a lot of similar flavors. However, Mezcal does have a much smokier taste. Now this flavor differentiator is a product of pre-distillation production. Agave hearts are used to make both spirits. However, the hearts that are used to make mezcal are cooked, traditionally in pits dug in the earth, infusing them with that smoky flavor. Mezcal is also infamous for the iconic magway worm that's submerged in some of the finished bottles. These worms are actually baby moths that are birthed on the agave plants using the plant as a food source. Now I couldn't get a straight answer as to why these worms are placed in the bottles, but there are some ideas here. Some say it enhances the flavor. Some say it's an indicator that the bottle is safe to drink, but some say it's just good old fashioned marketing. Now Oaxaca is responsible for producing over 70% of the world's mezcal. It makes for a very unique local culture and economy but also suggests a very special natural environment. The creation of mezcal is attributed to Spanish conquistadors that began experimenting with different local plants after landing in Mexico in 1519. Voila, mezcal. The number two spot goes to mole. Mole is a sauce that goes hand in hand with Oaxaca. It dates back to Mesoamerica and is a very traditional part of Mexican cuisine. Now there's many types of mole, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna stick with the most popular, mole negro. Mole negro has a seemingly never ending list of ingredients that's gonna vary between different regions of Oaxaca, different households, different restaurants. Whoever's cooking it, it's gonna be slightly different. However, common ingredients include a mix of dried peppers, including chihuacles negros, guajillos, pasillos mexicanos, anchos negros, and chipotle mecos. The sauce also might include just a few other things like garlic, almonds, peanuts, cinnamon, black peppercorn, cloves, various types of oil, raisins, pieces of bread, plantains, sesame seeds, pecans, tomato, tomatillo, thyme, oregano, chocolate, <laughs> avocado leaves, onions, celery, and carrots, just to name a few. There's a lot going on here, and it takes a very labor-intensive portion of the day to make this. So if you have the opportunity to try it, really appreciate every flavor that's developed and make sure you thank the cook. History is a little blurry and there's many theories to its origin. We do know that it dates to pre-Hispanic Mexico. Some say the Aztecs made this for special occasions and spiritual rituals. And the addition of chocolate made the sauce highly valued and extremely important. Oaxaca is known as the land of seven moles and mole is the national dish of Mexico, so you have to try it. The number one most recommended food to try to connect with Oaxaca 
goes to the Teleuda. This traditional Oaxacan dish is often referred to as Mexican pizza. Similar to a pizza's crust, the Teleuda is built upon a large, thin, crunchy tortilla that's either toasted or fried. Refried beans are evenly spread across the top of the tortilla, and then it's topped with pork lard, lettuce, avocado, some sort of meat, a drizzle of salsa, and a sprinkling of Oaxacan cheese. Yes, we said pork lard. And although these are the traditional toppings, the rules aren't strict here. The orderer and the creator get the final say as to what's put on top. And the flexibility for toppings is historically appropriate, as the recipe for tlayudas is believed to have come from a use whatever we have laying around rule. Tlayudas are native to Oaxaca and are one of the most iconic foods associated with the state. They're made by many street vendors and restaurants, so finding one of these shouldn't be too difficult. History here is a little blurry, but many believe that they've been around since before Spanish settlement, making them an extremely authentic thing to eat when in Oaxaca. So there you have it guys, the top 10 foods recommended by locals, natives, and visitors when you visit Oaxaca. I hope this list is going to help you connect with your destination better, connect with Oaxaca better, connect with Mexico better, also connect with Spain a little bit. Kind of cool. If you found any value in this video or enjoyed watching it, we would definitely appreciate it if you dropped a like or subscribe to the channel, maybe both. By doing so, it's going to help many other people that are interested in visiting Oaxaca or already booked their flight connect with the destination better and get the most out of their trip. We really enjoyed making this one. We're hoping to go next year for Dia de Muertos, so maybe we will see you there. But until next time, travel well.